So do you believe, as does Mr. Yashwan Sena, that, uh, that even if there were some measures uh, to be taken, for instance, up uh, public spending, higher expenditure, uh, in whatever form the stimulus package. No, Mr. Yashwan Sena is not recommending those. No, no, measures. he's not. He's saying that if even if they were to, to go down that route, the impact of that will not be visible in the short to medium term. The impact of that will probably be closer to 2019. Do you share that pessimism? You see, the, this government seems to have woken up only after August 31, when the numbers came out. On that day, five months of the current financial year have gone by. And we are another 27 days into the sixth month. So whatever they do now will have no impact this financial year. Mm. So the financial year, March 2018, will end on a sour note. Now, whether you will get the beneficial impact in 2018-19, I cannot say. It will depend upon the measures they take. Mm. It will depend upon the effectiveness of those measures. It will also depend upon the global environment. Mm. See, today, FPIs are pulling out their money. Why? Because they've lost confidence in the economic management of India. And they think that interest rates in the US will rise sufficiently so that uh, and now you've got a corporate tax cut as well in the u.s that's been announced yeah, rise sufficiently therefore they can make their return for their investors by putting more money in the u.s hmm. see money flows into india largely because of the interest rate arbitrage hmm. opportunity hmm. and if that window narrows if that interest rate differential narrows money will flow out since we're talking about interest rates uh, the clamor is that there should be a drastic reduction in interest rates. CII asking for a 100 basis point cut in interest rates. We've got the MPC meeting on the 4th of October. Do you believe that there is room for a rate cut oh, at is. all? There is. There is a room for rate cut. RBI is behind the curve. They should have cut it on the last occasion. They should have cut it on the previous occasion also. But whether they will cut a 100 basis point at one meeting, I doubt it. But. How I much think, room is there for oh, further I cuts? Think, I think they should cut at least 50 basis points. There is enough room because inflation is still low. So you're b batting for at least a 50 basis point cut in interest rates. But do you I believe that will... I have always argued for that. But will that... Uh, yes, while, while you were finance minister no, as well. No, but even, uh, even now I've but, said... But will, I've been saying it for the last year and a half that interest rates... But will, but will it translate into a pickup as far as private investment is concerned? Because while we have seen repo coming down uh, over the past two years, we haven't seen the commensurate pickup as far as private investment I'm goes. I'm confident private investment will pick up. And I'll tell you why. One, they have unleashed a raid Raj. They have, this is tax terrorism. The kind of notices that are going out of the income tax department are unbelievable. They have slapped huge notices for humongous amounts of money on international companies, Kane, Vodafone. The major disputes are locked in arbitration mm. and no one knows when those arbitrations will be resolved. They have sent 40 of India's large companies to bankruptcy resolution. Two bank chairmen have told me, one told me that power sector is the one that is most affected. Mm. The other said, no, it's telecommunication which is most affected. But between the two, the lesson is, the message is, telecommunication and power are most affected sectors. Mm. They're in deep distress. Construction is in the doldrums. Mining, despite the intentions of the government, mm. mining is not picked up because there's too much litigation on the mines that were auctioned. Mm. So where is the private investor going to put his money today in this atmosphere of uncertainty, litigation, and unleashing the tax departments after them.
So let me end then by asking you, sir, uh, you know, whether it is what Mr. Yashwan Sinha says or what uh, Mr. Swami says, the blame is being apportioned to the finance minister. As a former finance minister, uh, do you have more empathy for the position that Mr. Jaitley finds himself in? Because a lot of these decisions, whether it was demonetization or even pushing forward with the GST, were not necessarily entirely his decisions. Well, that's a, a very radical statement. I don't know if it's true. I mean, no one sitting in the chair of finance minister can say demonetization was not my decision or uh, the GST design was not my decision. If a finance minister will say that, it means that rather than the prime minister losing confidence in the finance minister, it's a case of the finance minister losing the confidence of the prime minister. Well, he, he, hasn't, he hasn't said that. I was Therefore, mere... you can't say that. It is the collective responsibility of the government. Hmm. But just as when there's a railway accident, the railway minister is the one up front there and taking the flak, when the economy is in a mess, and the economy is in the, uh, on a downslide, uh, it's inevitable that the finance minister has to stand there on the front line and take the flak. Well, uh, uh, that, that certainly is the case. You've faced many of those occasions your, well, yourself. My prime minister <laughs> and I were on the same page. Are you suggesting that they're not on the same I'm page? I'm saying that. I said my prime minister and I were on the same page. Hmm. There was no decision of the finance ministry which was taken without my knowledge or without my concurrence. Hmm. Well, there were decisions that uh, while you were not in office that you didn't necessarily agree with, but, but that's, that's a different matter and it's, it's, a, it's a... I was office as finance minister. All the decisions pertaining to the finance ministry were taken with my full knowledge and concurrence. Well, Mr. Chidambaram, thanks very much for joining us here on CNBC TV 18. Appreciate your time and thanks for talking to us about the state of the economy. Uh, with that, it is time for us to wrap up the CNBC TV 18 special from all of us here. Goodbye. Many thanks for watching.